Hi all, I have another fascinating game of Leela Chess. This was played in Division 2, so TSEC Season 14. This was against Nirvana. So Leela playing white. We have D4, D5. The opening book given is the Albin Counter Gambit, which, as many of you know, was a favourite in my Blitz Chess. But I was playing it rather unsoundly, to be honest, with the move F6 quite often as a kind of gambit. But uh, the standard way to play this is knight g e7 to try and gain this e5 pawn. So bishop g2, knight g6, this is the end of the book given. Now Lila castled, giving back that e5 pawn. So after knight takes, knight takes, now we have knight a3. This is slightly unusual. In chess based live book, it seems b3 is the most popular choice for example here to play bishop b2 here e3 so i'm trying to hit this d4 pawn and black uh, is actually maybe slightly worse uh, so it's an interesting position okay but knight a3 yeah this is, has a very interesting idea of either knight b5 or knight c2 maybe sometimes as well as b3 so still keeping b3 in reserve we have bishop e7 uh, knight b5 is played you might wonder well hold on hold on you might wonder what about if black played a6 to stop knight b5 well then knight c2 in fact without b3 might be the, the way to go about this for example c5 there's b4 here and in this position it's too dangerous for black to take on c4. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, for example, like this. Bang, knight c6. And black's in big trouble because of d6 dropping off after. <clears throat> so a6, yeah, there's another way of basically attacking d4 here. So we have bishop e7, knight b5. So neglecting c4, trying to win the center pawn. Black castles. On c5, you might think to reinforce the d4 pawn. Bishop f4 seems strong. For example, bishop f6, e3 now. And this is too dangerous for black to forfeit casting rights. The pressure on black is enormous here. This kind of scenario is just really unpleasant for black. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. Black's almost, the king's almost in a mating net of the bishop goes away and this is just winning material so that would be a total disaster scenario if we look at this c5 and you might wonder well bishop d6 again e3 is quite powerful here uh you know what does black actually do black's worse here so we have black just giving up the d4 pawn so knight takes d4 knight takes c4 and you might think isn't black okay here there's no pawn that's been sacrificed uh, black's okay surely b3 is played bishop f6 countering the d4 knight e3 knight e5 we have now um, on c5 you might ask trying to exploit the pin b takes c takes e takes this position is nice for white small edge a lot of pressure there so uh, knight e5 we have queen c2 now after c6 h3 Bishop d7, bishop a3. White actually has some interesting pawn mobility on the horizon here with e4 and f4, and potentially e5 in this position. So there, there is something going for white here. Okay, the rook moves, but uh, rook ad1, we have queen a5. Bishop c5 is very, very interesting, uh, maintaining a dark square grip. Rook ad8, f4, starting to push this. Uh, these center pawns so e4 with the idea e5 the bishop reinforces d4 as well very useful queen c7 e5 so this is getting to be visually very appealing for white king h2 now queen c8 black seems to be very passive b4 bishop takes c5 b takes knight e7 queen b3 bishop f5 and now yeah, this is seems a bit aimless. This bishop f5. I mean, it does seem like it, it, it's become transformed into a really passive position from earlier, 
and g4 it looks as though white's just squeezing here now bishop e4 knight d5 and the queen swings across here so supporting potentially f5 a little bit more protecting the e5 pawn and also with options to attack on uh, the king side this h7 point in particular so white is really making progress it seems or is are these weaknesses are these going to be proven to be weaknesses f5 queen c7 knight f3 knight d5 rook d e1 well e5 seems solid enough here b6 what about the c5 pawn in fact f6 ignoring c5 just going for it going for the h7 soft spot going for the attack bishop c8 is played it's really critical now if g takes queen h4 and this attack is really strong uh, for example like this bang knight takes e5 and, and mate it's a really strong attack so uh, knight takes f6 is a desperate move here played giving up a piece on g6 leaving the dreaded form pawn on f6 uh, knight g5 is really strong here uh, white has to be careful about this pinned pawn so something like queen h6 might be answerable with rook takes f6 because of that pin but the way to play it here is knight g5 so hitting h7 and not giving black too much time you know winning the exchange taking here it's just mashing mashing black's king really it's crushing so h queen h4 knight takes f6 Now this is not a piece second in its own right by the way because of the pin pawn but after g g5 it's evidence that the knight can't really move here from f6 because of h7 and has to give itself up that's that's just a crushing attack uh, so we have knight h5 giving the piece up officially now to queen takes h5 we have g6 queen h6 yeah job done really it's a piece up and still a raging attack on the black king uh, so king h8 rookie for the rook swings in uh, the bishop cuts across the diagonal now rook h4 threatening mate parried rook f4 that pawn's taken queen h4 bishop a6 the rook moves queen b6 queen f2 keeping things under control queen's coming off here doesn't matter piece up yep and the rest is kind of technique really but let's have a quick look at Lila's fine technique installing a knight potentially to f6 uh, so the king is kind of locked out uh, the rook can't leave because of the check and uh, rook e8 or rook g8 so the, the rook can't leave the first rank the king comes in and here it's adjudicated as a win for white both engines fought black was totally lost so very interesting idea here knight a3 against the uh, Albin counter gambit one of my favorites at blitz chess uh, as a surprise weapon for blitz chess with black but I, I wasn't playing the line which is the, the official line is really to regain the pawn uh, so but this shows yeah that leader's content to get that center pawn and get pawn mobility in the center as a lead up to a massive attack so quite instructive actually how advantages can be transformed and be loot be used later for attacking purposes as well if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessball.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check the youtube analysis in advance of these games from the improved menu learn for the masters youtube order button comments questions donations to the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciate it and also there's a new teespring store in the description for form porn and other chess t-shirts Okay, thanks very much.